Hey everybody, St. Paul here and welcome to episode 18 of Music on the Run. This week's guest is percussionist Ramon Islas. He's played with everybody. He's actually been playing a lot with uh, me and the boys for Funk Fridays, but most recently he's been on the road with the band Chicago. Ramon Islas is next on Music on the Run. Before we get started here, do me a favor. Wherever you got this podcast, make sure you subscribe, give us a rating, and if you have time and you like what you're hearing, make sure you write a review. It really helps us get the word out so we can have a lot more people coming to the party. Hey, everybody. I'm St. Paul Peterson. Prince gave me that nickname, and I've been lucky enough to tour with people like the Steve Miller Band, Kenny Loggins, Peter Frampton, Donny Osmond, to name a few. And when I'm not playing music, I love to run. And this is a podcast about how we stay healthy on the road, physically, mentally, and with our families. Welcome to Music on the Run. Hey everybody, St. Paul here and welcome to episode 18 of Music on the Run, the sixth from the Peterson family basement. Yep, I'm still down here. Anyway, my next guest grew up in L.A., He's an incredible musician who's worked with people like Aretha Franklin, Jennifer Lopez, and David Sanborn, and now has been touring with the classic rock band Chicago. Please welcome my buddy Ramon Islas. Hey, how are you? Hey, there you are. I'm going to just pin you on here just because otherwise my video guys will get really mad at me because they're going to have to work extra hard. Welcome. Oh, wow. But hey, <laughs> hey, video you? guys! Thanks for taking care of us. I'm good, man. I'm I'm you know rocking and rolling and taking it day by day. You're uh, where are you? you're in L.A. right now, right? Yeah, I'm in L.A. I'm in L.A. and I am home. You know, I'm home in L.A. and it's it's been <laughs> it's been interesting. You what know? have you been doing for four months, Ramon? Well, I know. Well, I got home like everybody, like everybody on the road, including yep. you. We all got home like March 14th, 15th or something. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, just cooking, hanging with the kids, with the family, um, working out when I can. Here at the house, I bought the battle ropes, you know, which oh, is did awesome. Did you really? Dude, I highly recommend that. It's a great workout, oh, you know. Oh. We'll totally get into that uh, in a okay. second because that's really what I want. To, we're going to talk music, of course. Yeah, of course. But of I course. want to know then, a bunch you know, of other stuff about that. But you've been home yeah. with the family, working out. You've and been doing. Rec- some- I have the studio, and I've been doing some recording with. You know, people are sending me tracks. Artists right. are sending me tracks. Been doing the Funk Friday with you, yes, which you is have, amazing. I love it. So fun, man. Well, well I'm mean, keep it's, asking it's you awesome. as long as you say yes. <laughs> Uh, yes you know that all you have to do is just send the tracks that's it man um, and, and so yeah. fun and um and cooking a lot of cooking oh experiment you were a cook i well i mean to a certain point i don't get all you know i just try to make it look fancy when i post it on instagram you know uh-huh. and, you, you cheat know, and, so, so yeah, I cheat. I cheat. So, <laughs> You're make, a liar. Make a, Ramon <laughs> Islas is a liar. <laughs> no, 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 no. But but uh, yeah, and just you know, and keeping up on what's happening, and washing my hands, and wearing my face masks, you know, and doing what I'm supposed to do, you know. So I want to get I want to get back on the road, just like you. We want oh, music man. to get out there, man. We want to yes. play. We want to play. So I can't wait to get back in the same room playing with my uh, friends. We've been doing a lot of stuff online, but man, dude, I'm I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I need. I mean, we we need the the communication. The the vibe, the whole presence, the the fans, the everything, the back and forth, you know, and you know, I mean, look at I'm for what we're doing now. This is what we. This is what we. How we have to share the music and share the love, and mm-hmm. and they need it. You know, we need it. The fans need it. You know, and, and like Chicago just posted a, um, you know, a, a, the song "Feeling Stronger" every day, a video thing, and yeah, so and cool. I love doing it, but then again, you know, you're watching it, and I'm going, oh, I miss my brothers. I miss them, you know. So, how long have you been with uh, Chicago now? I started um, March of 2018. Yeah, what a great so like three gig, years, man! It's fun, dude. It are is. you having a blast? Yes, I mean I it's it's the ultimate. I mean, you're a part of a rock band, a famous rock band, a rock band that 
that I grew up, that we, you and I grew up listening to, you know, that, you know, that we just, we know so many songs before I was even in the band. I played them, who knows, hundreds of times you played them. And, and uh, yeah, and when Wally, the drummer, when he called me and said, hey, I just threw your name out to the boys and can you do some dates? And I was like, let me think about, yes, you know, <laughs> of course. Yep. Yes. And I, I was like, of course. And, and, um, and it's been amazing ever since, you know. Such and, a uh, great gig, man. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if I don't think I've seen you with that gig. So I have a long yeah. history with the band from, uh, I know a lot of the cats in the band as well. So yeah, they all know um, you. They all know you. Well, I, yeah. I can't wait to see you in that chair, man. It's, I just, well, I guess I, I have to wait a little while, but. Well, well, you know, every time we were near you, you were on the road. So cause remember I called you. You were I, out you with, sure with did, Peter. And, and, and thank you for that. Yeah, you were out with Peter, and I was like, "Get get your ass to the venue." You're like, "I'm not in town." And I was like, "Uh, okay, right." So, so yeah. So since this is music on the run, yes, run sir. us through what a typical day looks like uh, to you, because we all need to stay in shape. You look great, by the way. I'm Thank sure you. it's super physical what you do on stage, but is there any other routines that uh, you go through? Well, you're, you're talking on the ro- on the road, correct? On the road, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we, you know, okay, let's start from the night before. You know, you okay. leave, you're done with the show. Yep. You you get on the tour bus, as you know, uh, and then you head out to the next city, and it could be a two to seven, eight hour drive, depending where you're going. Right. So it, obviously, movies, you relax, you know, you know, and fall asleep, and then get you know, get to the hotel. So my routine usually is waking up. I do my, even when I'm home, I do a shake for breakfast, right? I've been, you know, like I, I use this product called Lynn Nutrition. It's a friend of mine, Lisa Lynn, oh. who, whose products, I should turn you on to that, man. It's some Please. really good stuff. Please. Is there anything here? Like one of the cool things I use every day is the daily power shot. The Lynn Fit and Daily Power Shot, mega multivitamin. Dude. It is a mega multivitamin mineral. It's awesome. <laughs> Seriously. That with the shake and, and slowly waking up, of course, my cup of coffee. You know, you always have to have that with you. you oh, know? Wait, always what class that. is that, Ramon? Uh, what well, class is that? You should ask. It's the East Los Avenue mug. Where can we get something so beautiful? How funny you should ask. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you go to my website, which is eastlos.com, and you'll see shop, the little icon shop. And there's many a product there you can find. But my, the cup is one of my there. favorites. You, I must have one. I've, have I've a got visit. my little music on the run one here, too. Oh, I want one of those. I want oh, one I of those. Give you those one. are awesome. It costs $20,000 you- to ship. I hate shipping <laughs> mugs because they're so expensive. It's oh, the dumbest God, thing ever. Yes. I know. Okay. That's bad. I know. I know. So, so coffee, so, uh, you've, got your, you've got your protein shake. That's the first thing you do. And I'm ready. Vitamin mix. So usually, usually if it's a nice day outside, depending on the city, whatever, then I'll go for a long walk, you know? And, and here's the thing too, music on the run listeners, this guy right here has inspired me many times to get my butt out of the hotel room because he is running. I don't know. What do you do? Like, Oh, I just did nine miles today. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? You know, he's like, all right, I got to get out there. If Paul's on the, he's, he's hitting the streets. I'm going to hit the streets. That's good. So, and That's what it's all about. Seriously, right? seriously. And, and I get my, you know, some fresh air and go out, hang out, check out the city, grab a cup of coffee while I'm out. Yeah, there you and go. And usually by 2, 2.30 or so, then I'll hit the gym just for a little bit. If it's a show night, yep. I won't do too much of a workout because the show itself for me is a workout because right. I'm moving around so much bouncing, dancing around, you know? Um, so I'll do just like some weights and a little bit of cardio back to the hotel, take a shower, get a late lunch and then head out to the venue. And here we go, you know, showtime, you know? So that's pretty slick, man. And I mean, what about, I mean, I remember being on tour and it's been so much better now yeah. being health conscious with the food and everything like that. But yeah. you know, uh, having pizza and crap around all the time. Do you do better at home or on the road? I I do better on the road, man. I do do better on the road because my goal is to always stay healthy on the road 
because yeah. the show must go on. You know, if, if you're running a hundred, 101 temperature, you, you can't call in sick and you know, there's no sub, you know, you've got to do the show. So if you're not feeling well, it's like, no, 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 I got to stay, you know, I, I, and also I try to stay on like eating chicken and vegetables for dinner or late night, you know, bus food. Yeah. Yeah. Like just grilled chicken is always my, if I, our manager, Steve, if, if he doesn't find me like with, what do you want to eat? You know, and I tell you, I said, just get me grilled chicken and veggies. That's it. No starch, just something light, you know, super and he's lean. like, all right, cool. Yeah. Super lean. And, and, um, uh, usually when I'm home, then I'll do, <laughs> I'll, Let's get some burgers. Let's get, you know, right. some fried chicken. Well, cause you know, you're home, you know? Yeah. So, oh, oh. so what are you but, doing since you've been home? I mean, you got, I mean, you're still, you were talking about some bands or something like that, right? Resistance well, I, or, or recording. Fun? Well, okay. Chicago has been staying busy. You know, we've been, um, I've been recording a lot with Robert, Robert and Jim and Jim Peter, Peter Nick have been writing oh, a cool. lot. And I've recorded like on, four or five songs already with them no, and they're cool tunes, man. I mean, if you go to the Chicago website, Chicago, the band.com, you'll see a link for music and three of the songs are posted already and they sound amazing. Wow. And uh, Neil, our singer is on it. Robert, of course is playing. I'm playing tons of percussion all over it. Um, and uh, yeah, and they just keep writing. They keep writing outside of that. We've been doing the videos as you've seen, yep. you know, like kind of what we've been doing. And then, you know, phone calls, we check in on each other, you know, like what's happening, what's the latest, blah, blah, blah. And then outside of that, musically, I've been recording with other artists. People have been sending me tracks like your buddy, man, your buddy, did Snowman. He, did Snowman yeah, send you a track? He, he sent me two songs and I dude, they're it. killing. They're he's killing. Player, I've yet man. to finish them. Yeah. He's a really good player. I've yet to finish them because last week, oh Lord, I had, you know, I was telling you I had major computer problems and I That's just. Right. Yeah. It just died, of course, right in the middle of the session. That was oh like, oh my god, you know. So I was in computer hell for a couple of days, but I'm back. I'm back to normal. Um, and this Latin artist, a singer I know, she sent me yesterday a couple of songs. So I'll be busy the next few days. I have on my plate, you know, about four songs to track. And another artist down the street that lives for me, this blues guitar yeah. player. So he just sent me two songs and. Um, and dude, it's as you know. You have look at behind you. You have your studio. It's especially in this time. It's so important to have somewhere to record. You know, sure is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. And meanwhile, great, by the way, <laughs> I'm in the living room. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. But I'm, you know, I I would have done the Zoom for my studio, but the the Wi-Fi is in and out, oh, and I don't I didn't it. want to I don't want to stress your your uh, video people on that. And you, so I was like from the, from the living room, the kitchen, I'm sorry. Well, living room. Um, and then I've been, you know, I've been getting really into bike riding. So I've been oh, doing that. Great. Yeah. So, so you're staying in shape at home too. That's actually yeah. where I was leading to is that you're, you're still working out and doing that kind of thing at home. huh? Yeah. I, you, 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 either me and my son go for a walk, a long walk, um, early morning, late night. Yeah. And then I do a bike ride around seven, seven thirty. I listen to, you know, I'm a big baseball fan, so I listen to Dodger Talk. It's an hour talk show, got so it. I headphones, and I ride the whole the whole way. Perfect. And I do about eight to ten miles, depending how fast and how much energy I have, you know. <laughs> right, so, right. You know? Well, that's great, so, man. So you, you, you're for me. I don't know about you, but uh, but running for me in this isolation has been um, such a godsend. I'm telling you to uh -huh. be able to get out and just kind of work out all the funkiness and not the good funkiness. I know the weird yeah. funkiness that's going on all around. Of course. Us. Yeah. It just, it, it Very so important. helps me relieve stress. Of course. Yeah, I know me too. I have to do something. I can't, if I go one day without doing any exercising, it's a hard sleep that night and you know, we don't, we can't, we need to sleep. We need to rest you know? So the, True yeah, true. the stress of what's happening, especially with the COVID and then all the horrible racism and, and uh, anger and everything happening yes. around the world. And mm -hmm. that combination is, it's not good for the soul, you know? I, I mean, it was in your backyard when it started, mm -hmm. man. I mean, I was like, I was worried about all you guys, you know? 
about all well, my we were people worried in about everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been uh such a I don't even know the word for it. I, that's why I'm struggling to come up with a word. It's been enlightening in one way because mm. I'm having conversations with my black friends, my brown friends, my whatever you want. I mean, yeah, that I normally wouldn't have because usually when we're on a gig, we just talk about, hey, I, how's the gig? <laughs> we yeah. don't go, you know, I never stopped to ask you what it's like to grow up. I know. Uh, being who you are. I and know. I mean, and that's it, gotta be, yeah. I'm sure you have stories to tell. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, um, I mean, you know, one of the most beautiful part things about music as we know, there's no separating color. There's no, like, we are, oh I mean, with us, we, you and I have such a beautiful opportunity to experience true Black American music with our dear brothers and sisters because mm -hmm. that's the foundation of music. Seriously. I mean, yes, the, roots, the roots of rock and roll of music is all about R&B, you know, and, and it's sad that some of the songs from the sixties are still, you know, are today, the lyrics are today, you know, and uh, about all the changes that were happening back then. Uh, it, but it is like, it is a movement. It's such a strong movement that has, it's, it's happening. It's really happening. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad to see so many people getting hurt and lives, you know, uh, just murders happening and deaths and, and, but it, it's leading towards a movement that it, it's been years in the making and, and painful. And, and I, I do, I feel, I feel for many a friend and many, um, you know, all, all the, all the heartache, all the pain, you know, mm -hmm. I found myself just at times, just literally like cr just crying. And, yeah. and I remember the one, the most recent one was, um, was, was the young, the young man, Taylor, the one who played violin. Taylor can't remember his last name. Mm. Uh, God, he has such a beautiful smile. And, and when, he, and when I was seeing those pictures of the beating of him and then he ends up dying and that one just broke me down. And I was like, it, I can't believe it's continuing, but yet. I believe it's continuing because it's ugliness that's, that's happening around us. And, um, you know, and it's painful, man. It's painful. It's painful to see. How is everything in LA right now? I mean, besides you guys being nearly on lockdown, oh. though, how is the writing? How is the sense? How is the sense of the musical community out there? I mean, have you well, been able to get a read on how people are doing? Well, uh, I'm not in directly in LA, um, um, just below Pasadena. So not too much around me, but when I'm watching the news, like Santa Monica and you know, the rioting, well, not rioting, not rioting, the protesting, the protesting seems like it's calmed down a little bit. Um, uh, music wise, there's nothing happening. I mean, live, right. there are, there are some places in Orange County that have live music, but they're, Limited on capacity, obviously. I believe it's less than 50% that they're allowed. I've yet to do a gig. I haven't been called to do a, a, an actual gig. Right. You know, um, and, and uh, you know, it's, once again, the, the, the whole COVID thing is uh, people need to wear their masks, dude. People Just need to be out the there wearing mask. a mask. You know, I, you know um, it's been proven. Look at New York City. Look what Cuomo did. Uh, they are doing their job. They did it. And I praise all my New York friends and, mm. you know, I'm happy to hear that. And, and I have a lot of friends out there and they were telling me it was brutal. It was ugly to see the whole city just shut down. And now it's slowly getting back to a normalcy. That sure and is. yesterday, LA um, just announced a lot of shutdowns again on, um, on, what is it? Salons, anything indoor, gyms. any, anything indoor gyms, yeah. you know, they all are shut down again. So it's like a, like people just stay away and wear your mask, please. That's it. We want to get back and make exactly. music. Yeah. We need to get back. 
We and this playing. is for you. This is for you and for us. You know, we, we yeah, we miss playing. We we want to get back out there and have make you guys smile again. Make me smile. <laughs> right. So let's yeah. let's just. I want to go back now. You grew okay. up in L.A., right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And you're the youngest of seven. Correct. I'm the youngest Correct. of five. Oh wow! You and me okay. were the same. Yeah. I no wonder we got along like that. We I got know, along right? like that. Yeah, I know, man. man. So what's it like growing up in a, uh, with you have brothers and sisters? I have four brothers, two sisters, but one of my sisters passed away about 10 years ago. Oh, I'm so sorry yeah. to hear that. No, about thir- 13, 14 years ago now. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So growing and, up uh, in a household like that, yeah. is everybody musical? Well, there, let me see. One, two, let's see, one, two, three, musical. Three brothers, my brother Gil plays guitar. He lives up north now in Seattle area. And my brother Bill, who growing up, he played pretty much everything, guitar, bass. Now he plays a little percussion around town with uh, some of the bands, the local bands. Okay. And then my brother Jerry, who plays guitar, he does a lot of church stuff, which is okay. great. You know, right. and him and his part, him and his buddy, uh, great harmonies. And then I, of course, I grew up listening to all the music that they were listening to you know i which which is what which was all the 70s 60s 70s rock and roll man no kidding yeah chicago by any chance oh dude i mean i knew cta every every song every every vocal everything about that album by the age of seven six i mean okay so my brothers had bands in high school so, I, which puts me at around seven, eight years old, right? They were in high, they were either junior high school or high school, but they would rehearse at our house. We had this huge back room, which is like a family room. Okay. So all their musician friends would set up the gear and leave it there, and they would rehearse two or three nights a week. We're talking full on band, you know, massive band, two guitars, keyboards, horn sections, three singers, everything. So I would get behind the drum set when they weren't home uh-huh. and put the headphones on and, and put the music on and play and try to play along. Cause I would just sit there and watch them rehearse and trip out. Like how are they making music hitting that instrument or playing that guitar? Mm-hmm. I was more interested in watching them do what they were doing outside of hearing the song. And then they both that, that those two elements came together. Then um, uh, I remember one day I rushed home to beat my brothers so I can get behind the drum set. Like literally I was running home. I was like, they're not going to get home for another 45 minutes. So that day, my brother got home while I was behind the kit. Cause they always told me, do not touch the Don't instrument. Touch Don't yeah. touch. Did you touch my drum set? Don't touch my drum. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I freaked out when I saw him walk in the room. Right. And he said, no, keep playing. My brother said, keep playing. Cause he was like, you could play. And I was, I was just playing the two and the four, sure. you know, doom, 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 whatever song I was playing along with the headphones. And um, that was pretty much the beginning of like the drum calling me, so to speak. Right. Mm. Like, um, like wanting to play. And here's a story about that too. My same brother who my brother, Bill, who found me hitting the kit, uh, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe about a, a year or so later, he was, um, him and his girlfriend, which is now my sister-in-law, were headed to a concert. It was a Friday night, and, and everybody's in the house just hanging out. And my mom asked my brother, where are you guys going? And he said, we're going to go see a band at the Greek Theater. We're going to go see Chicago at the oh Greek. And I stood up, because that was my favorite band back then already. Right. I stood up, and I ran to the door, and I blocked the door. And I said, you can't go unless you take me. <laughs> and my, my brother said, we only have two tickets. And dude, and I, I mean, I remember, but I remember like my sister-in-law said, you started crying. Like, no, you have to take me. You have to take me. So she said, all right, we'll exchange the two tickets and hopefully get a third ticket. But we have to go to the theater to try to do it to the Greek. Mm-hmm. Dude, I jumped in the car. We get to the Greek. They had great seats. They had two great seats, like dead center, maybe row 10 or something. The only three tickets available were whoop, against oh. the wall way in the back. Right. So we got those three and that was my very first concert 
And my very first concert was Chicago. So. Unbelievable. What Crazy, are the odds right? that you get the gig however many years later? Yeah, I know. I did, it wasn't even in my thought process, not even when I started working as a musician. I mean, I was like, God, it'd be great to play the song, but never to be a part of the band. I remember, I remember years ago, I had, told, I had mentioned to Wally, because Wally was playing percussion, and then yep, Tris, Tris was on drums. Was playing drums, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I told Wally, man, if, if by any chance you end up on kit, I said, because, you, you know, you never know what happens. I said, call me. <laughs> well, and you Wally have goes, to put wow. it out there, don't you? Yeah, exactly. You had to put it out there in the stars, man. You had to put it in the universe. Uh, and Wally, years later, I, I must have told Wally that like seven years ago when he first got in the band. Yeah. You know? Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. And now, you know, now, now, uh, dude, we were supposed to be on the road right now. <laughs> you I know. know. Well, they, <laughs> they, they are road dogs, man. That, yes. that I'll give them. Dude, they, they've been touring for 51 years straight. Who wins? Well, 52. Tower, of, po- this Tower of Power or Chicago in the touring? I mean, they're both neck and neck. Yeah. They're on yeah, the road right. all the time. It's just- and that's the first thing. And that's the first thing Robert told me when he said, welcome to the band. He goes, he said, look, welcome to the band. We're happy to have you here. And he goes, there's only one thing I ask of you. And I said, what? And he goes, get ready because this band works. And yeah. I said, start the bus. Start the I, bus. Let's yep. go. You know, well, you're so. not afraid of work. <laughs> let's do it, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. So before we keep in the present, let's, let's go back. So you went and saw Chicago. When yeah. did you get the opportunity to start playing some gigs and how did that transpire? Well, I think, okay. So I, first of all, I, you know, we love music growing up. You know? So then I started getting, as I, as I got into my teenage years, and able to drive, I started going more and more to the baked potato, you know, oh, yeah. to see live music, right? By and the way, my, those of you who don't know what the baked potato is, it's a very right. famous club in Los Angeles where the greatest musicians get to oh, go yeah. play. Yeah. Anyway, and, sorry, and I just wanted to explain that. No, 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 of course. It's, it's, it's in North Hollywood, and it's like the old, one of the oldest clubs we have. Uh, yeah, and we're talking like from the late 60s or early 70s. Mm-hmm. I believe it's the early 70s since the club existed. So I would go, well, first of all, I was already playing. I was playing in high school bands, playing drum set. Actually, I was playing drum set. I was about in seventh, eighth grade playing with a group of seniors from a high school. Right. They were, it was, you know, it, it was a band that needed a drummer and somebody said, hey, I know this kid, but he's a seventh grader or, you know, he's 13 years old and these are 17 year olds. And so I remember like auditioning, I guess. And, and they were like, yeah, I mean, let's play. So it was a rock band. We were just covers. And, you know, I, I remember one time we played at a club, an 18 and over club because the guys were 18 mm-hmm. and yet I was 14 and we're playing and the crowd loved it. And, and as soon as we were done, the owner came over and said, okay, you have to leave because I just found out you're 14 years old. So you have to leave. So he literally like escorted me out of the club. Mm-hmm. And, and the guys in the band were like, well, we don't want to leave yet. So can you just hang out? I mean, we're going to hang out. And I was like, oh, so I just oh, sat man. outside, you know, waiting for them to come out, you know, because oh. I was 14. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't know his liquor license, I suppose. Yeah, well, exactly. So I think so I waited outside. Of, I think there's a lot of us who kind of snuck in. Yeah, of course. Wire doing that stuff. Of course we did. Yeah, I think I don't know how it happened, but somebody told them I was 14. And so I was playing, you know, doing that. And then as I got into my teenage years, I, uh, I met, you know, you just start meeting more people in the industry. Mm-hmm. So then slowly I started getting into the Latin scene where, well, when I decided to switch over to percussion, then I started taking percussion real serious, like uh, uh, going to, I started studying with Luis Conte, you know, the famous Luis. I started studying with him. Then I took lessons from different Cuban percussionists and, and then I started buying the gear. I remember I went, saved some money, bought a whole mess of gear and, um, and then uh, started doing little Latin gigs around town. Then I met this producer who was dealing with a lot of the higher end artists of the Latin market. 
So then he would ask me, Hey, do you want to do this date? And then I was like, you know, you're making 50 bucks on a local right. date. And he's like, it pays 300 for a 40 minute show. And I was like, what? That's awesome. Yes, yes. I'm in. So, <laughs> so we, then we started touring and then I was kind of doing the whole Latin market for a little bit. Not, not too major of Latin artists, but you know, some good ones, like, you know, doing theaters and everything and, and uh, little tours, not long tours. And that just started snowballing into other opportunities. Like then I met Ricky Minor. Oh, yeah. You know, and Ricky, this is in the late 90s, I believe, when I met Ricky. And, and um, this is funny. I, okay, so I recorded with a band called 98 Degrees mm-hmm. on their, okay, on, on the song called uh, Una Noche, which was like a radio hit for them. Mm-hmm. And then I found out that they were going to tour. I was in New York and then I found out, yeah, they're going to start touring. I was like, oh, I played on that song. So I was like, who's in charge of putting the band together? So they told me Ricky Minor. So I was like, I don't know who that is. I hunted him down, called the union. Yeah. And then I got a hold of him. And, and Ricky, Ricky was funny. Ricky said, um, he goes, who are you? And I said, oh, my name's Ray Islas. I play percussion. I live in LA. And, and he goes, look, I know everybody here in LA. And he goes, I never heard of you. And I said, well, not yet. You haven't heard of me yet. <laughs> and then he started laughing. He was like, all right, well, um, he goes, can you send me something? And this was around the time where the internet was kind of exploding and, yep. and websites, emails, all that. So right. I had a website already going. Uh, my buddy, Dave Hooper, you probably know Dave Hooper, drummer. I don't think so. Oh, okay. He, he's a, he's a web designer as well. Like he knows everything about that. So he created my website. We were on the road with the Rippingtons back then where literally in the back of the bus, he was putting my website together. And I was like shocked. Wow, this is so cool. A website, you know? (laughs) So then when I got a hold of Ricky minor, I told, I told Ricky, well, you can look me up on the internet. And he goes, you have a website. I said, yeah. And he goes, well, let me look you up right now. And he said, all right, cool. All right. He goes, okay, come down tomorrow. And I said, tomorrow. He goes, yeah, come down to center stage. You know, I'm auditioning uh, musicians for the gig. And I said, okay, um, what time? And he told me the time and I showed up and was playing. Sam Sims was on bass. Oh, um, sure. He's great. You know Sam. Yeah. Teddy, Teddy Campbell was on, on drums. Yep. Uh, who else? The, the guitar player from New York was the MD. And I forgot who else. The keyboard player. Another LA guy. So we... That was the beginning of me working with Ricky Minor, pretty much. And then we, that band, dude, all we did was promo for six months with 90 Ooh. Degrees. Ooh. Six months of just strict promo with a show here and there, a Disney show, a, another TV show. And, and then that ended. And then I started with the, immediately, like two weeks later after that with the Backstreet Boys. Did you and then really? we did that. I yeah, auditioned we did for that the Backstreet Boys at one of those Ricky Minor call cattle calls. Oh, you did! <laughs> oh, I sure man. did. Oh, I right did. on. Maybe, I did not maybe I met you. Oh, uh, I, I think Sam, well, <laughs> Sam Sims ended up doing the gig. Of course, with yeah. of course. Yeah. I don't even know if it was for that tour. It might have been a subsequent. It might have been, yeah, it might have been a different one. Might have been a different because so that you band started rolling with the band boy bands. Yeah, I did. I did the boy band for for uh, well, we did with Backstreet. We did over like 120 shows and we should have done more, but then 9-11 happened and oh. the boys didn't want to tour anymore. They were mm-hmm. like, no, we're done. We, after 9-11, we went to Japan and then that was it, you know, and then we were done. And they started up like a year later, but then I, from there, I did little things here and there working with, um, you know, still working with, with uh, Ricky, like with Patti LaBelle. And then okay. he put me on Christina Aguilera. And then I was working with Christina on two tours after that. So, you tell which me was stuff great. I don't know about you, which is really great. <laughs> this is yeah, I mean, cool. I got to record with Christina. I recorded on Ain't No Other Man on that song. Oh, really? man. When I, when, I was, when I was called into the studio and I tracked on that song, I knew. I remember coming home and thinking, that's a Grammy Award winning song right there. Mm-hmm. That is, she's, she's going to explode. That's a number one tune. And sure enough, it was uh, took it to a whole different level, man. Oh, that yeah. tour, we, we went everywhere after that tour. So and, you went on the road with her as well. Yeah, I did three tours with her. 
Golly, yeah. man. Three long tours. Yeah. We, but man, with Christina, we, when we would go out, we would stay out for nine weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks. And my kids, uh-huh. I remember Diego was like the one, you know, and then, and he didn't know me when I got home, you know, so, he was like, yes. you know, this is such an important part to share with, you know, people who work up and coming and, and mm-hmm. how you manage and navigate being on the road while having a young family, having your yeah. wife back at home. How does that work? How did, how did that work for you? We're going to break away for a second here so I can tell you about a couple really important items. Number one, we have a brand new highlights page on YouTube. We want you to check it out. It's especially made by our intern, Jake Miller, for people who don't have quite enough time to sit through the entire video podcast. It's a great way to catch up on some great tidbits of information from all of our guests. You're going to have to search for it, I'm afraid, just simply because we need more subscribers on there in order for us to get a custom URL. But it's Music on the Run Highlights. You know what else is on there, you guys? A brand new feature that we've been doing strictly on Fridays. It's called Funk Friday. Got to have a little funk for your weekend. We feature great musicians, some former guests, some future guests, and it's a little one to two minute vignette of us jamming and funking out. And it's a great way to kick off your weekend. It's called Funk Fridays, every Friday. Check it out. It's on the Music on the Run highlights reel. And of course, you'll find it on Facebook and Instagram as well. All right, let's get back to the interview. Having your yeah. wife back at home, how does that work? How did how did that work for you? Man, it it's uh, you know it has its it has its moments. I got to be honest, man. There's mm-hmm. there's times where you're like you're on the road and you know you're in Europe. It's it's a Sunday. It's raining and it's a day off and you're just walking around and you're like, oh, I miss the family. I wish oh, I was. Yeah. I wish the kids were here. I wish. I was home with the kids, but then you know you you go back in your mind. You're like, well, I'm working. You know, there's a reason why I'm working and. You know, and money needs to be put away for their education, future education. And, and, um, that's, I mean, that, that always was the balance. You know, you, you make that call back home. That always helped. And then late, and then eventually it got into, to this type of communication, to video communication, Thank which God made for this. Yeah. 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 I mean, seriously. Things a lot easier. I mean, dude, you remember being on the road where you had to find a payphone. Oh, yeah. My like, kids you know, don't even know what that is now. I, dude, I was, I tell Gabby, <laughs> my 14 year old, I tell her, I remember, I remember like stopping somewhere in Germany and asking the guys, can you, you have any coins, any yeah. coins? Because I want to call, I want to call back. I said, I was trying to get a hold of your mom just to say hi. And you're hoping she's going to answer because it's a pay phone to a home phone. It wasn't a cell phone. So. Oh, of course not. So, not yet. Yeah, anyway. yeah not yet. Some Not people yet. had them, but I think they were ungodly expensive back in those days. Oh yeah, they were. It was insane. One of the oh. one of the very check this out. One of the yeah. very first cell phones I saw, portable portable phones, I should say, not even cell phone. Uh, was I was doing a session, and Wally was on the session. Okay. Back then, I think he was with Santana, and he showed up to the session with like a big old purse. He's carrying it. And, and I was like, what are you carrying, dude? And he goes, oh, check it out. And he goes, my wife got me this because she was pregnant at the time. And she was like in month eight month, you know, almost to the week's possible birth. And he goes, it's a self, it's a phone. So if she starts having pain or needs to go to the hospital, she can call me. Dude, the phone, like, it was like mash, you know, like you look at them when they call, they like all connected and, and it. I was like, that's a phone. I said, man, that must have been expensive. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he goes, it's definitely pricey, man. So, yeah, he, he carried it. It was like this big, man. <laughs> that's the history of it. I wish I would have saved all those old phones, man. Oh, I know, right? I know. Yeah, my favorite was a little flip one. <laughs> I think I still have one sitting around the house here. That one I think I did save. Yeah, so you, smart, you're man. working with all your touring all the time with all the biggest acts at this point. 
Well, yes. Yeah. I mean, then, then there, then you know, the, then you're home because you know when you do it, like you do a tour with, with, uh, let's say, artists like Christina, artists like Backstreet. Right. They don't, they don't go out every year. You know, they they do the tour, and then they have to come out with an album, and then mm-hmm. they do the tour, and that could take easily, you know, eight months to eighteen months for another tour to happen. Right. right? So then you're home and then you're like, all right, I got to get on the session market or I have to find something else, you know? And, you know, and, um, it's nice that with Chicago, that's, um, you don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about like, uh, okay, we're done now. Let me find something else. It's, it's like, we're, we're busy. You have two months off maybe. And then you're back on the road or you have dates. It's like, you know, things pop up. Uh, yes, it was, it was great definitely great and still is great to have those names you know i can i can throw on the website and list mm-hmm. you know and and um and i mean it's amazing i mean really my one of my very first experiences especially of touring was working with a band called Dakota Moon which was four guys who all sang and they're african american guys and they did like a rock country type thing with influences of blues and pop, right? And they were with Electra Records. And Electra put them on priority <clears throat> on priority, world priority, which meant, you know, like I remember the manager said, Don't don't accept any other work because we're gonna get busy. Like next week, busy. And I was like, Oh, okay. And it was just um it was just the four of them and me and Cajon and Congas. That's it. Yeah. And then we, we would do dates around LA, but good dates. Like, I mean, like Hollywood parties type stuff, you know, uh, record company things. And, and then when they, okay, so they ended up, the first thing I think we ended up getting was opening for Eric Clapton um, in Oakland, in okay. Oakland. And then another one in San Francisco and then San Diego. It was only like three or four dates. So then they wanted to make the band a little bit bigger. So they added a keyboard player. And a drummer. And that's where Teddy Campbell came in. Because Teddy was from Chicago. So Teddy came in and started doing that. And then I got on full percussion. Dude, it exploded. We're talking the mid-90s. It exploded. We ended up, basically, we circled the globe twice. Like, in one tour. You know? Unbelievable. Like, I'm not kidding. I, it was like, I had a ticket. Well, back then, you know, the, you still had tickets, right? The sure. actual Paper tickets. tickets. I ha- my ticket book was like that thick. <laughs> and when the tour manager handed it to me, she said, do not lose this because you flip through it and it said LA to New York, New York to London, you know, right. London yeah. to Paris and then Paris to Germany. And then you're in Germany for like you two lose weeks. That and you, ticket stack. You are, you're screwed. That's like losing money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I re- and I remember, you know, going through it and then it said Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Man. and then it said, and then it said Japan to LA, and that was coming home. That was like home. And then, and then when we got home, she handed me at the airport another stack of tickets, just like that. Before I even, I mean, your baggage claim, right? Right. And she she handed me that one, and that one was in reverse, like back to Japan and circling, coming all the way back home. It was Good work if you can get it, man. Wow, dude, it Fantastic. was insane. And then they did; they were just promoting the first album. It was fun, man. It was my that I think was my true first experience of being outside of the states and experiencing mm. the world. You know right. everything. You know, and um, that was amazing, man. That opened that just opened your mind. Up. You know, I highly like I tell my kids, especially my daughter, is like some of the best education you can get is by traveling. You know, and, sure. and, and, and as you know, as you and your whole family know, it's just mm-hmm. like you, you meet, you experience cultures, you, you respect the cultures, you have incredible food, mm-hmm. unbelievable food, um, you know, and, and you meet wonderful people while you're doing it. I totally agree with you. And uh, yeah. by traveling, I think that we gain a better understanding of each other through... Ooh interacting with each other and engaging in different cultures so that we aren't freaked out by things and afraid of things and whether we look different or whether the the traditions are different yeah. if you are open to that 
that will set you up and set the world up for oh, yeah. such a peaceful journey. I mean, it, for me, traveling has just been incredible. I mean, it's, I, I agree. We are so lucky that we've done that. And maybe that's what insulates the music community. Uh, I feel it's a little insulated from what's going on in the world mm-hmm. just because we we speak the same language. We we love on each other. We respect yeah. all the music. And it's, it's just been an amazing gift to travel and experience those things. I agree. And, and you know, one of the most, um, when I decided, like to myself, as, as what you did and, and Ricky and your whole family did, when you decide, that's it. I want to be a musician. You know, this is what I want to do. You're also, you also told yourself, I want to travel and experience music from other cultures. I want to hear what radio sounds like in, you know, Switzerland or in, you know, uh, Istanbul or, I, I mean, and that was always my thing. The first thing I want to do is turn on that radio in the room and, and change the channels and hear what's going on music wise. Like, what do they listen to? What are you hearing? You know, like my, the very first time I went to um, to South Africa. Oh man, I was just blown away with yeah. all the music. I was in heaven, and and I remember, and that's when I went to Dakota Moon. We went to um, uh, Joburg and and um, the other city, the other city by the by the by the water further further south South Africa. Um, it was just so powerful and. It was all about the culture. Like anywhere in Latin America you go to, you're going to hear their music on the radio. It's not, it wasn't happening in the States back then. You know, I mean, now you can get it. Now you can get it through Spotify and iTunes or, you know, you, know, you can order the music. But back then you, you had to be there in order to hear what's going on, you know. And that when I told myself, this is what I want to do. And then I told myself, and you know, I, and you speak to it internally. You don't say it out loud. I said, I I said, I want to travel internationally. I want to get out. I want to play music somewhere else. A week later, I got called to do the the, the Dakota moon gig, which took me out of the country. And that was the first time I left. I went to Germany and I was, you know, I was nervous. I was in my early twenties. You know, I was like, it is nerve wracking. Yeah. And I had to go by myself. I had to fly by myself, mm-hmm. take a taxi to the hotel by myself, check mm-hmm. in because the guys weren't there. The guys were in a different city and they were coming in the next day. Yeah. They were like, we're going to meet there in uh, Hamburg. First time mm-hmm. going to Hamburg. Oh, and let me tell you something about culture. So I'm in Hamburg and, uh, you know, time change. I couldn't sleep. So I went to the front desk and I said, it was, must have been like one, two in the morning, maybe one. And I said, is this a safe city to walk around at this hour? And the front desk girl, she starts laughing. She goes, of course, you're, you're in Hamburg. It's beautiful. And she goes, go look at the city. And, and it was warm. It was a warm night. So, dude, I just started walking around. So I come to an intersection crossing the street. And I told, I was telling my daughter this story recently. I was, you know, just got to the intersection. There was a guy, you know, holding his bike, you know, like a, a bicycle pedal bike, yep. waiting for the light to change. And then I looked at him, I said, do you speak English? And, and he's nodded. And he goes, yes. And he goes, very little, very little. And I said, oh, I want to, I said, I'm getting hungry. Is there, you know, food, anything open, food? And he goes, oh, and he goes, follow me, follow me. So walking and we started talking, right? And I find out he was from somewhere in India. I forgot where. Wow. He was there. He was like, dude, he was much younger than me. He was there to go to school. And was working three jobs to send money back home, you know, to get working three jobs, going to school in the morning. And it was, he goes, and then he, I got, you know, he was going to, it was like one, two in the morning. He had to be up at five to go work and then take his classes and then go to his other job, go to his other job. And he goes like same routine. So I was like, wow, how cool. And he goes, what do you do? Musician from Los Angeles. Oh, I love music. I love music. And so we're talking, walking, dude. We were walking for like 20 minutes. I'm like, where's this guy taking me, man? You know, <laughs> we're passing up joints. And he goes, No, 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 follow better place, better place. Okay. I'm trusting him. We walk. So he stops and he goes, Here. He goes, very good food. And it was a McDonald's. He's pointing, oh, he's pointing me to. <laughs> no. And I started laughing. I said, oh I said, all right. I, I said, I said, come on in. Dinner's on me. I said, I, I'll buy you dinner. And Honest. he goes, oh, okay. So, so we went in and we talked some more and, and, um, you know, we did, we did write each other's 
addresses down. Like, uh, but we never stayed in contact, but it was just like, you know, uh, it was just a great experience of a culture in another culture and find out what people are doing for their families. Right. You know, that was a big shock to me. I mean, it was a big culture shock, a big, like, like, you know, coming from here, from LA, you know, where, you know, that I, I, if I didn't want to work at that age, I could live with my parents and I'd be fine, you know? Right. These journeys are, are, are so interesting. Again, that you've, what it boils down to in, in what we said earlier is how do we advance if we aren't talking to each other? True. The bottom line, man, Very is that point. we just got to engage. And, Very and good that's, point. That's, there's fear in that, too. Yeah. What if he, wants, what if he doesn't want to talk to me? What if she, you know, you know whatever the case may be. I mean, I'm but sure think, you're the same way too. I mean, you're the same way when you're on the road, you know, because oh, I you love, know, you're, no, absolutely. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I yeah. want to get out. I want to run in the city. I mean, when I was, uh, the, the last big tour I did was with Brampton in 2016. And I, I remember ran everywhere as you stated earlier. Yeah. yeah. I felt like an old man. Cause I had my, my AM radio going on in my head, yeah. running through the city <laughs> by myself. Um, it's just yeah. like, whoop, doo -doo -doo -doo. but I tell you what, yeah. man, I saw the cities by staying yes, in shape and yeah. engaging in what was going on, whether it was Nolens or uh, anywhere. I yeah, tell you man. what, the training in the South in the summer is not fun. Oh, That's dude, the no, only problem. no, no, I, I would walk out. I would walk out and I'd be like, oh God, okay, this is going to be a short walk. I'm just going to get some oh, yeah. coffee, you know, but then I wanted to be outside, but then I realized, no, I have to save my energy for the show tonight. So right. get back to my room and, and chill. So yeah. what's the toughest thing about being on the road for you? Um, rest. Okay. Getting, getting enough proper rest because your body the time, everything changes, you know, you, you, you don't go to sleep at a normal hour and you don't wake up at a normal hour. You know, I, I, um, like I said, sometimes the, the drive may be two hours where you can be in your, in your actual bed at 2 a.m. Or sometimes you don't get to the hotel till 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. And you have to sleep, you know, so then you're blocking out the curtains, you're making sure nobody turn off. The, I would, and I don't like turning off my phone because if anything I want to know what the kids are up to I want to know like if if somebody the manager Steve needs to get a hold of me for some reason I don't turn off my phone you know I, I leave it on and and it's just getting enough rest because uh, and of course it's staying healthy that comes with it rest you know you don't sleep you're gonna get sick uh, I've, I've done two or three shows where I have like be like, let me just get through this show, you know, please, <laughs> because yeah, I just wasn't right. feeling well. I remember Robert told me one time. He said, he said, uh, "Hey man, if you got to, you got to bounce. If if you your stomach isn't right, and don't worry about it, just do it, you know." And mm -hmm. he goes, "We've all done it. Right? We've all done it. Where you just gotta, you gotta go and come back. Nobody's gonna trip on it." And he goes, "Nobody's gonna be upset about any of that." And he goes, "Just and he, you know, guys, you know, the the Jimmy Lee Robert, you know the." principles they're they're like so cool about everything you know you know as long as you get the job done obviously yeah. <laughs> you know you are, but that's yeah you are one of the funniest guys i know first of all and you're such a great <laughs> you, <man>. brother <laughs> no i mean every second of the day and ricky tells me stories because you've toured my, with my brother ricky you and oh I my not, god we haven't yes. had the pleasure of touring together. we yeah. haven't yet. yet exactly we will we will yet yet we yet. will but that's gonna happen oh my god yes yeah. ricky when me and Ricky are in a room, um, and it's non-stop silliness, you know? Well, that's what's so fun about that. And man. I love it. I yeah. love it. It keeps you young, man. It keeps you, it keeps you going. And, and I miss your brother. I miss him so much. You know, one of the first times I met Ricky was working with Stevie Nicks. I was, no I was, um, I was, because, okay, back then, Lenny Castro was doing the George Lopez show, right? Right. So then Stevie started doing some promo dates. I don't know for what. If it, I get yeah, yeah, it was for an, the new album. And Lenny couldn't leave the George show, right? right. Or they, they really didn't like him leaving, you know. And so then Waddy calls me up and he's like, hey, man, I need you to sub for Lenny with Stevie Nicks. And I was like, hell yeah, I mean, cool. Yeah, you're right. So I went in and 
and Ricky, Ricky was on the gig. And from the very get go, from like the moment we started talking, you know, uh, we were hanging, we were hanging hard rehearsals and then the TV show. And then weeks later, you know, I think I did two covered for Lenny for two shows. And then Lenny, but here's the funny thing is like Lenny would go to go back to Stevie. Then I got called to suffer him for the George Lopez show. <laughs> you got it. So then, me. so we would go back and right. forth, you know, wow. and, and, and then Perfect. the tour came up. Yeah, it was fine. I mean, I was like, whatever. I mean, it's work. Mm -hmm. Either one is fine. Uh, and then weeks later, I started doing the David Sanborn gig, and Ricky was on the David Sanborn. Sure. Gig, you know, right. and That's then world, we were on the road. You know, you know Dave. I mean, you yep. you've worked with Dave many a time. So, of and then that's where I met you uh, right. at the Dakota, where you came out and hung out with us. And right. and Ricky would just, you, oh, you got to meet my brother Paul. You got to meet Paul. He's amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> And I was like, wait a minute, that's your brother? I know, I know of Paul. I didn't put it together. I said, oh, I said, now I see the resemblance. And so I obviously knew from you back in the Prince, um, you know, all that, all those, that whole time frame, man. You and the album cover, everything with more stay and that whole thing. Yeah, man. Let's see, it's over there somewhere. See, there it is, right there. a little kid in the orange suit somewhere up here. Yes, yeah, right there. Right yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fit in that suit anymore, mind you, but. Uh, no. that's, you know, that's, so it's funny more. you said that. That's my goal is to get back, get my weight back down to, I'm at, where am I at? 161 to get it like at 153, but like a, a, a firm 153. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's That's never going to happen so. for me because I was, <laughs> I was this big and hadn't grown into my body when I was 17 yeah. doing that. So there, there's no hope of that. So that you were 17? That wait, wait, wait. You were 17 of yeah, those days? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, you were you were living large. Graduated high school and then went and worked with those guys. You were living large back then, man. Look at that. I didn't even know what I had. I was like, oh, I know, okay, right? Yeah, sure, I'll do this. You know how that goes. You're just gonna funky. step in, step to yeah. the next thing. Uh, so yes, we need to tour. We need to hang out, and we're gonna continue yes, to do these Funk Friday things. Amen. Before I let you go, tell, you're an educator as well. Yeah, yeah. Tell me I got into. Okay, so. Uh, all right. So I was studying music. The first place I studied music was at Pasadena city college, which is very close to me. And I got to know a lot of great musicians coming out of there and I still keep in touch with them. And the teachers were just phenomenal as well. Like real players, real jazz cats. And, and, um, so, okay. Now fast forward, you know, graduated from the school and, and male man just arrived, graduated from the school. Then, I just happened to be driving by one day and I was like, Hmm, I got, I got an hour to kill. I'm going to go see, I'm going to go see if Mr. K if Dr. Killian, the director is there. He's a great person. Right. So I walk into his office. He's like, Ray, what's going on? Oh my God, what you been up to? And I told him I've been playing with so-and-so and so-and-so. And, and then he right there, he offered me, he said, I have a position opening up for teaching Latin percussion. And he goes, and it was like, in 10 days. No kidding. And I said, well, I, I said, I don't have, I don't have a bachelor's or a master's, you know, oh. I don't have that. And he said, no, but what you have is experience. And I need the kids to understand experience as well. Right. And he goes, you can, and he goes, you can, he goes, put together a, a syllabus for me. And I was like, what's that? <laughs> and he's like, he said, this is what it, he, he gave me a, an example. This yep. is what I need from you work on that. So I was like, okay, walked in, started teaching Latin percussion like that. I had a class of about 20 students and it was twice a week. And then the, the, um, it started evolving into other opportunities came up. The, the history of rock and roll course, the teacher, she needed to, uh, she needed to visit family back East. So she asked me to suffer her for two weeks. And now, now we're talking a class that meets every day. Right. And it's the history of rock and roll. And she gave me like, here's everything, you know, this thick. Yeah. So, yeah. And dude, teaching that class was so much fun because really? I mean, we're talking about there's audio and video and lecture. And I had like 60 plus students in a lecture hall. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, have one remote audio, one remote video ready to go. And then we're talking about little Richard. Or talking about the time frame of the Beatles. Like the Beatles was a whole week, you know, which is awesome. Right. And then she came back and she took her class, right? 
And then I got, uh, uh, then the music business class came up. And he's like, do you want that class? And I was like, and I said, once again, I don't have the master. Because, you know, you need a master's to teach, right? And, yep. and the director, now a new director came in. Uh, Killian retired and a new guy came in and he told me, no, man, I, it's important for the students to uh, know what's real. You know? So I would bring, I told him day one, I said, look, the business changes every day, every week stuff happened two hours ago. That's not happening now. You know right. uh, I said, but you have to be thick skinned. You have to roll with the changes. You got to be ready to just do what's needed for the situation for the song for the, uh, the musical director, you have to be a team player. And if you can't do any of this, this is not for you. I said, this is not the field Good. you want to be in. Yeah. No, I'm I, so I glad them. you boiled yeah. it down to, to if you cannot handle this criteria, this is not for you. Yeah. And I prided I myself on doing that. I'd like, if you don't want this and this is not easy, Yeah, this is not, oh. uh, this is, it just is not easy. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, so it's, it's not, I, I tell them you, you, you're going to work. If you want to work, you're going to work a lot. If you want time off, I said, be careful with that. Don't give yourself like a, a couple of days off. Don't give it, you know, the, not right now, not when you're trying to get established and create a name. Right. I said, take everything. I tell my student, take everything you can and do what you can. If you, if it's good music, if it's a, a good friend and do it for free, why not? What are you going to do? If you have three hours, do it. I said, you'll be rewarded later on it. You know, that's so true. You sometimes yeah. you don't know why you're doing a gig. You're shaking your head going, this is not great, but somebody's listening. Somebody right? listen, and another opportunity will come yeah. out of this. I mean, I mean, look at places. you are, you are the classic example of that. And I just spoke about that to uh, this young drummer. I know I said, man, I've been doing this funk Friday with my buddy. We've done it three times. I said, all of a sudden, boom. So man gives me a yeah. session. Right. right. And it's his album. It's his album. Right. You know, it's like, I heard you playing with Paul. It sounds amazing. It's like, we're, you know, we, and we're, you know, me and, me and Paul are brothers, you know, we're yeah. family. We do anything we can for each other. And it's like, wow, Paul got me a gig. You know, <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. You know, because really awesome. it came out of a hang yeah. and who knows really what that's for other than the brotherly connection and to play some yeah. music. But yeah, the, the byproduct is great that it's a gig. It's, it, it, and it's you awesome. I mean, it, it's, it. You never know why you're doing it. Mm. And also I tell the students just, you know, it, the main thing is networking and roll with the changes. If you can do those two things, you're fine. You'll make it. And obviously pa practice your instrument. Be Learn. One of the best things I've ever heard was like, learn the foundation, learn the history of the instrument and then make it your own. And then you, as soon as you make it your own, you'll become a working musician and learn every style of music possible. You know, that's it. You know, and, and you know what I asked Robert Lamb because Robert, uh, they, I didn't audition for Chicago, right? I did not audition. They just said, okay, boom, let's do it. They sent me the music. I learned the music. You know, now it's different, as you know, when you're listening to music and you love the song. Yeah. It's awesome. But then when you have to play it, it's a different approach because you have to learn it. Yes, you do. You have to go you have back to learn you it. You might have learned it and played it wrong for 30 years. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, or you just, you're in your car singing along going, hell yeah, you know, air drums and everything. Yep. And then you're like, wait a minute. No, I, okay. On this section, there's no drums. It's tambourine. Okay, cool. Blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, I remember I made little cheat notes for myself for the mm -hmm. first two shows. Right. And I'm looking at, and I'm playing, you know, and Robert's right here to my left and Wally's to my right. So I'm playing, looking at the cheat notes. And, and then Robert, after the first show, he said, man, it sounds great. And he goes, but do me a favor. Don't use the cheat notes tomorrow night. And he goes, because it looks like you're reading music. And he goes, this is about, this is rock and roll. This is like, look at, none of us are reading music. We all know the song. And he goes, let it get into your soul. And if you make mistakes tomorrow, so what? And he goes, so what? Don't worry about it. And I was like, what a beautiful approach, you know? Beautiful. And then I did. I put the sheet, the, my, you know, my little charts, left them in the room, and I was like all nervous, <laughs> you know? It's a little bit of a crutch. I understand for sure. Yeah. But then I asked, okay, so I asked, I said, I asked Robert, I said, man, it's, it's crazy. I didn't, even, I didn't even audition. And Robert said, oh, no, you didn't. You did audition. We sat around and watched the, a performance you did with David Sanborn. And, no kidding. And, and he said, and he said, um, 
he said, oh man, the guy plays with Sanborn and they all love Sanborn. He was like, that was, that was a ticket for me. As soon as I saw you playing with Sanborn, I was like, he's in. I was like, awesome. And I told Dave that story. I told Dave Sanborn that story. And he was like, he's a big Chicago fan too. I was trying yeah. to get him to come out and hang out with us when we were in New York last time. I think but, I'm going to get Dave on this next Funk Friday, by the way. Dude, he's, oh. Well, you know how that goes. I mean, he's threatening. Uh, let's put it that way. And he's going to do the show. Excellent. You know, I've been keeping in touch because, well, I mean, I, I, I played in a band so many years ago, but it's fun that you and I have that uh, connection as well. Dude, exactly. If you... If you get Dave on Funk Friday, you know you got to get me on I that. I know. One, dude. I yeah. do. Yeah. Oh, and wait till you hear the new one, man. It's ooh, it's fun. Ooh, hey. Well, they're all amazing, man. Every it's, single one is amazing. We've got, you know, what we got to do is we got to put out a record of, ni- you know, I've got nineteen of these things, nineteen one-minute songs. Perfect. And Why then not? we should just. I'll come to L.A. and we'll have the Funk Friday with the L.A. contingency. I'll go to New York with the Funk Friday. Why not? And then we'll just dude. extend the one-minute song. Exactly, and then How it becomes a jam. Be? Oh, come, oh, come jam. on. That's actually yeah. a great idea. That's a Why great not? idea, Paul. Yeah. So I'm yeah. coming for you as soon as they let me. Well, get on the plane, man. Just wear your mask and you'll be fine. Ramon, you've been <laughs> such a cool guest to have on the show. And thank you, thank brother. You for I love you, man. Uh, yes, I appreciate it. And the family? How's the family? Everybody Everybody's good? Everybody's good. I've got my daughter here from L.A. She goes back tomorrow. And, oh, okay. Um, okay. My other daughter lives here, so they made my wife and I dinner last night. Beautiful. Everyone is healthy. We're very blessed, man. Amen. And yours? Everybody's great. Everybody's great. Yeah, man. Please say hello to them. And uh, yeah, brother, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm glad we did this. And and I'm here for you. Just say, hey, just say we're taking the time out. We're going to do a lot more music together. That's for sure. Awesome, Ramon awesome. Islas, Everybody, that is episode 18. From the basement. That's right. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Ramon. Ow, we out. Thank you, brother. We out. Woo. Music on the Run was hosted by yours truly, St. Paul Peterson. Edited and produced by my buddy, Davide Razo. Video editing by Ivan Sebastianov. And a very special thanks to the people who financially support this podcast. And remember, always run the hills. 